So it begins. The final offensive, the ultimate rampage of Russians has just started. But what makes it different this time is that Russians brought hundreds of thousands of soldiers, tens of thousands pieces of equipment, and the soldiers themselves are more trained, concentrated and prepared. So it will be much harder for Ukraine to defend themselves, at least until Western weapons arrive, but it will not be impossible. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and see some most recent footage. And our first picture is the result of a search of one of a Ukrainian corrupted oligarch. And as you can see, for some reason he decided to use the $100 bills as a blanket. Next we have a video from Belarus, and this is the footage of a Ukrainian drone, which allegedly was flying above Belarus. But eventually the Belarusian soldiers were able to intercept this drone. Next we go to the capital of France, Paris, where the president of Ukraine Vladimir Zelensky has arrived to meet with its president Emmanuel Macron and the chancellor of Germany Olaf Scholz. One of the interesting things is that right before one of their press conferences, accidentally Olaf Scholz and Vladimir Zelensky mistook their places. But this honest mistake was more than enough for Russian propaganda to make fun of both of them. But in all seriousness, the goal of this meeting was obviously to discuss the military support to Ukraine, and according to Zelensky, he was able to achieve significant progress. And later on, Vladimir Zelensky and Emmanuel Macron, they both went to Belgium to the European Union summit. Upon their arrival, they were greeted by the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. And then Zelensky proceeded to address the leaders of the European Union, and here are his four main statements. The first one is that Ukraine requires military support to defend themselves against Russia. The second is that Zelensky was asking to accelerate the process of the approval of Ukraine to join the European Union. The third request that he made is to increase the sanctions against Russia, especially against its nuclear sector. And the fourth statement is that Zelensky was talking once again about his peace formula, which included 10 points, which is basically how the world is gonna be after Ukraine defeats Russia. The president of Ukraine then also individually addressed some other countries, such as for example Slovakia, asking them to give Ukraine some of their retired military planes. In response to that, the representatives of this country, they mentioned that Slovakia will do everything possible to give at least some of their MiG-29 planes. Among other countries which were pledging their military support to Ukraine was Poland, but they said that the country will not yet give its military planes, at least it's not going to be the first country to do this. But we do have some good news about the fighter jets, and what I'm talking about here is that according to the representatives of the United Kingdom, Ukrainian pilots will be training to use the fighter jet Typhoon. In addition to that, Ukraine is in talks with the German company Ryan Metal about supplying modern German tanks Panther. The delivery might take anywhere between 15 to 18 months, but there is also a possibility that Ryan Metal might build a factory on the territory of Ukraine. And ultimately, Sweden approved the military support package to Ukraine worth of 400 million dollars, which will include the infantry fighting vehicles CV-90s. And well, the Russian side had their response to the ongoing events, and who I'm referring to is the press secretary of Russia Dmitry Peskov, who is saying that all these western supplies of weapons to Ukraine will only extend this conflict in Ukraine and delay the inevitable, because Russia will definitely achieve all of its goals of its I mean, special military operation. And well, I mean, Russia has this narrow window right now of approximately one month until these western vehicles start to arrive, and then Ukraine will be predominantly successful. But until then, we have at least the whole month where Russians will be capturing the initiative and performing significant offensive. And I will be here every single day to report these events to you. And if you don't want to miss any of them, just please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and just see how I live outside of YouTube. But okay, 
And now as promised, let me give you a quick update from the east. And first of all, as you can see from uh, this picture, Ukrainians were able to destroy a tank support fighting vehicle of Russians called Terminator in Kriminna. And what makes this particular destruction so extraordinary is that according to Russia, this is a highly modernized, incredible fighting vehicle and Russia only has about a dozen of them. I mean, one less right now. And this was the result of Russians launching another offensive to the west of Kriminna, which has been successfully repelled by Ukrainians. Next to go to Bakhmut, and according to President Zelensky, the reason why Ukrainians do not want to surrender this city is to stall the Russian invasion in the east as much as possible, because Ukrainians understand that Russians want to take this city so much and are putting so much effort into doing this. And in the meantime, you Ukrainians are like, okay, we'll just keep protecting it, you're barely advancing, suffering significant losses, this is basically a win-win for us. Then we go to another hot spot in the east, Vuhlidar, where recently Russians attempted another massive assault, which has been successfully repelled by Ukrainians, and as a result of this, more than 10 military vehicles of Russians have been destroyed. And before I give you the same quick update from the south, because we do have at least one interesting thing to talk about, let's take a look at this map which shows us the changes in territorial control. And first of all, as you can see, Russians were able to advance literally a little bit to the northeast of Mikilske. And then, as we go to the territories close to Bakhmut, we can see that Russians were able to expand the contested territories to the south and west of Krasnohora. And so yes, as mentioned previously, the massive ultimate offensive of Russians has already begun and I already started receiving several photos and videos from the front lines. And the majority of footage I have is either too long or it has the material which is not allowed on YouTube. That is why I decided to upload all the photos and videos to my Patreon. But don't worry, one week of free access is still available and all the links can be found down below. Alright, and now as promised, let me give you a couple of words about the south and then we talk about the final offensive of Russians. And first of all, according to the Ukrainian sources, they were able to successfully attack the airport in Berdyansk, inflicting very big losses, estimated to be more than a hundred of Russian soldiers. Next we go to Kinburn Spit, where both sides, Russians and Ukrainians, are performing reconnaissance and sabotage activities against each other. And then, according to the data presented to us by the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, the Russian occupiers are preparing the residents of this peninsula about upcoming Ukrainian arrival. And what they mean by that is that they were able to access this document, which basically says that the major cities on this peninsula are now in yellow level of touristic threat, and especially the northern part of Crimea. In addition to that, the security measures and activities will be increased, which basically once again means that Russians are saying there is no panic in Crimea, but just in case we will prevent panic by creating potential panic. But pretty much yes, the main event of today is that the Russian final offensive, the ultimate rampage, has already begun in the east. And one of the first Ukrainian authorities to confirm this was the advisor to the president of Ukraine, Mikhailo Podolyak. He basically said that there was an offensive that Russia is planning in Luhansk and Donetsk and everyone was expecting it to happen in the near future. And well, here it is. And then we even have this map presented to us by the Institute for the Study of War, which shows that the most significant combat activities were indeed happening in these specific regions. The same report also claims that Russians started advancing in Luhansk region, but Ukrainians are repelling the majority of these attacks, that is why the advancement of Russian is very slow. And the main directions of Russian attacks as of recently have been against Kupyansk, Svatovy Kriminne Highway, Bakhmut, Avdiivka and Vuhlidar. So as you can see, Russians started their final march across the entire eastern front line and they committed at least reportedly three divisions, which is approximately anywhere between 30 to 40,000 
people. But most likely, this is just the beginning. Russians are only testing the Ukrainian defenses. Because according to the Ukrainian intelligence, Russians have approximately 1800 tanks, almost 4000 armored personnel carriers, 300 helicopters, 400 fighter jets and 2700 artillery systems, in addition to approximately 300 thousand soldiers on the territory of Ukraine, and the majority of them are concentrated in the east. But at least one good thing about this is that due to the shortage of the military equipment, Russians are reportedly using very old Soviet-era military vehicles, at least some of them. In addition to that, these are not the same Russians who invaded back in February of 2022, who were just given orders to go forward and capture Kiev in three days. These new Russians are more trained, focused and prepared for the combat activities. That is why it will be much more complicated for Ukraine to defend itself, at least until Western vehicles start to arrive. But nevertheless, the Pentagon claims that these Russians are still not as prepared as they would have been a couple of months from now, because Russians are rushing this offensive once again until Ukraine receives the Western weapons and then Russia will simply have no choices but to be defeated. And because right now we're only seeing the very first stages of this culmination, most likely the actual massive offensive escalation will happen within next 10 days. Russians might even launch it on the anniversary of the invasion, February 24th, because we already know how much they love their symbolism. And in potential confirmation of this, we have these advertisements, which were recently discovered in Moscow, that its capital is planning to do another batch of Swan Lake concerts in the near future. And we all know that this specific ballet is always the predecessor of tough times for Russia. But do not feel discouraged, because it always gets worse before it gets better. All Ukraine needs is to stall the Russian invasion, wait for the Western weapons, and then all they need is one chance to turn this whole war around. And with the help of the Western equipment, the revenge of Ukrainians will be swift and final. And so just once again, if you don't want to miss any of these events as soon as they start happening, just please consider subscribing to my channel, it only takes one click. And if you want to support my work financially, please consider becoming my channel member, use the PayPal link or become my Patreon, where there is still one week of free access. All the useful links can be found to the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, товарищи, and see you tomorrow.